Oh, look at that. Another monthly installment of let's see how bad Anthony is at Amazon. For the past has been pretty bad. But let's go over my monthly profits and sales and expenses, most importantly, from June. To see how profitable Amazon FBA is if you're actually doing some work at it. Honestly, some work is probably a little bit generous because I think it was only still like three days of work for the whole month. I forgot my whole notebook. It has all the numbers in it. Also, as you can probably tell, we're actually in a house right now and we've been so freaking stir crazy because we've just been waiting on stuff to arrive that we ordered. Finally, I think today gonna be back in our van. It's only been like six days in the past six weeks. I don't like living in houses, which I never thought I would say. But let's quickly talk about just a realistic profit and loss statement from an Amazon business. And honestly, this past month wasn't crazy high numbers. This is something that's super achievable for you even if you have a job right now and are looking to build Amazon either as a side hustle or a way to quit your job. In the month of June, my sales were only $6,789.92, which is actually not terrible because my average sales price was $19.51 per item, which is higher than it normally is for me. From those just about $7,000 in sales, my refunds were $380.93, but we're only around two $220 after the reimbursements and like shipping credits were given back to my account. Because when an item gets refunded, you do get reimbursed on some of the fees, not quite all of them though, unfortunately. But that refund rate is honestly a little bit high because some of the stuff that I was selling was apparel and normally that has a higher return rate, as well as some phone cases, which I had picked up. If you guys have seen those previous sourcing videos and even said in those videos that a lot of those would likely get returned, but I still will make a net profit on them after all the returns are squared out. What's up, bird? But if you're selling, typically you can expect return rates of around three to 5%. Sometimes it's a lot lower than that, just depends on the type of thing that you buy. If you have apparel, sometimes it's up to 10% because Amazon's return policy is pretty permissive. So that means after all this, my net sales were about $6,453.78. And honestly, this is the number from which we have to start thinking about the fees that come with running an Amazon business, which are mainly going to be your cost of the goods that you sell. And then Amazon fees, which are broken up into two major categories, one being like referral fees and the second being transaction fees. Referral fees are basically just what you get charged for selling an item on Amazon. The FBA transaction fees are normally closer to the pick and pack fees. You won't have to worry about this if you do fulfilled by merchant, where you're actually shipping your own items, but that takes way too much time for me, especially living in a van. Of all of that, those fees amounted to $2,456.79, which is about 35-ish percent of my overall total top line sales. And I'd say that's a little bit higher than it could be, but within the range of what's normal for me selling on Amazon. And so after you subtract out this $2,500 just about from the $6,500 just about, you get what's going to be paid back to you into your bank account from Amazon. So you'd see for the month of June, it'd be about $4,000. But from that, it's not just all profit because you have to do a bunch of stuff with that money, including paying yourself, paying for taxes, and paying back what you spent on goods or paying for more inventory in the future if you paid out of cash. But the cost of goods sold for this month for me was $2,394.42, which is also around that 35% mark, leaving me with only net profit, which is $1,467.29, about 25, a little bit less percent profit, which is still not bad as a profit margin, 20 to 25%, up to 30% is pretty typical for what you're gonna see on Amazon because of all the fees that you have to pay and the cost of just buying your own goods. But from that $1,467 number, you're not gonna be able to just pay yourself all of that. Because when you're selling on Amazon, you also have a bunch of subscription and just cost of doing business fees. Not fees, but things you need to buy. For me, oh my gosh, that is skewed. For me, those include all of like my subscriptions to software, which include Inventory Lab for inventorying as well as some sourcing, Selleramp, which is probably gives you the best information on retail arbitrage sourcing, BeCool, which is how I'm able to reprice all my inventory without really having to worry about it at all, and then QuickBooks, which I use for all my accounting. Oh, and business insurance. Oh, and keep up. That's also pretty important if you want a bunch more information when you're sourcing so that you don't make bad buys. Now, Inventory Lab and BeCool for me are what I consider as capitalized costs because I buy them once during the year because the yearly price is cheaper, but we should still factor it in on a 12 month basis just to see what those costs are. But on top of all this, I still need to buy like supplies to ship stuff in. And for me this month, it was a bunch of boxes because I don't like to carry just a ton of boxes in the back of my van. And that was $20 for boxes and other supplies. And then one more thing that I don't normally talk about in these videos because I don't normally see this as cash coming in or out of my account. But if we're accounting correctly, we should be writing off the mileage that we use when we're going reselling. And I estimated that in June, I had about hundred miles that I went for shipping at UPS as well as going to source for Amazon, which is a $58 write-off that I get to put, bringing my profit to $1,180.04. Honestly though, this doesn't show the whole picture because you have to think about the cash that you have in your account. And to be honest with you, I haven't done any reselling this month at all in the past 20 days, but I've still sold about four to $5,000 worth of inventory, which isn't a lot to be honest with you. I do want to get that number up, but all those sales had to come from past inventory purchases. And we could see that reflected pretty obviously when we look at how much I spent on inventory in June, even though my cost of goods sold was only $2,400, the amount that I spent was $6,823.25. Maybe some of that was spent in June, but this is all based on the shipments that I sent out in July. One of them was at the very beginning of June though. But because of that, 
I spent over $4,400 more in inventory than the inventory basis that was sold in the month of June, meaning that all that is getting rolled towards now. Some of that still is an FC transfer, FC processing, a bunch of those different processes that take a little bit of time. But from that, I've sold a bunch of inventory this month and I will continue to sell inventory in the future as well as it becomes available at Amazon or as I drop my prices down because I might be pricing a little bit high and I have Be Cool do that automatically for me, which you can check out in this video if you have Be Cool or you are interested in getting a repricer that'll do all of your repricing for you automatically. Since I always give my cash-based accounting number, especially when it was good because I wasn't spending a lot of money, this month it was negative $3,248, but I should make money on that in the future. If you're interested in how I use my profit to make sure that I'm paying myself and future-proofing my business, check out this video over here or just check out that Be Cool video and I'll see you there.